Pre-season testing has begun, and all eyes were on Red Bull. Will they demolish the rest of the grid just like they did last season? Now we know. Let's start today's video with their star driver's experience with the RB20. Max Verstappen shared his thoughts following the opening day of pre-season testing in Bahrain on Wednesday, mentioning that the RB20 was responding well to his driving. Despite ending the day with a 1.1 second gap to Lando Norris in second place, it might seem like an understatement. It's worth taking into consideration that testing can be a bit of a guessing game, as teams often hold back some performance. The three-time reigning world champion completed over 140 laps in the car before passing it on to Sergio Perez on Thursday. It was a solid day's work for him, showcasing the RB20 as a promising contender right from the start. Verstappen seemed to be in control of his car all day in Bahrain, with the RB20 showing a noticeable departure from the dominant RB19 of last season. Red Bull took a risk by deviating from a successful formula, but the initial indications were promising for Verstappen on the opening day of testing in Sakhir. It feels good to be back in an F1 car again and I had fun out on track today, Verstappen said. We covered a lot of laps and tried quite a few things with the car, which was important, so happy overall with how it went. After the winter break, the first few laps always surprise you a little, but then you get back into the swing of things pretty quickly. Overall, the car was responding well, and considering this was only testing, we had a nice day. Looking to tomorrow, we are speaking to our engineers about what the plans will be, but I am looking forward to getting into the car in the afternoon. Verstappen's race engineer, Giampiero Lambiase, couldn't hide his smile when Verstappen set his initial flying lap eight-tenths faster than Norris, even before achieving his fastest time of the day. While there are still areas to improve moving forward, Lambias mentioned that Red Bull had already put in plenty of work on what turned out to be a productive day for the team. The winter break was fairly short this year, but nonetheless, the amount of work which has gone into the car has been impressive as usual, Lambias said. We came to Bahrain with a few unknowns around a relatively new car, but we have tested most of the fundamentals on day one and got the answers we needed to. Now we have a solid base to take on to days two and three, when Checo takes over the car in the morning. Adrian Newey once again showcased his engineering brilliance by elaborating on Red Bull's bold decision to overhaul last year's dominant F1 car. Much to the surprise of many, the RB20 displayed the same innovative features during pre-season testing in Bahrain that were revealed at last week's launch. Former F1 strategy engineer Bernie Collins was convinced that Red Bull had revealed a dummy car last week as a tactic to mislead their rivals. In 2023, Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez dominated the season, winning all but one of the season's Grand Prix between them, leaving their competitors struggling to keep up. Still, Chief Technical Officer Newey made the daring choice to steer in a different direction for the upcoming campaign. The RB20 features vertical side pod inlets and a pronounced cooling setup, marking significant changes from last year's model. With a stellar reputation in the paddock, the 65-year-old's rationale for the bold approach underscores precisely why Red Bull has secured such an invaluable asset. We knew that everyone else was going to copy our car from last year, Newey told Auto Motor on Sport. If we had only focused on further development, we would have been vulnerable. Despite topping the timesheets in Bahrain on Wednesday by more than a second, Helmut Marco believes the RB20's advantage over its rivals is merely three-tenths. While it's essential to acknowledge that testing days offer limited insights due to varying programs, fuel loads and tyre strategies among drivers, the performance of Red Bull's car seemed daunting for their competitors. This year, Rivals were aiming to narrow the gap, but the initial signs weren't in their favour. Instead, judging from the results of day one, it seems they'll once more be contending for the title of best of the rest. Marco offered them some encouragement, suggesting that Verstappen's remarkable lap time might have been influenced by the tyre compound and the time of day. The Red Bull Motorsport advisor emphasised this point to Automotor on Sport. The lead is not as big as it looks. We were the only ones who took to the track with fresh medium tyres in the cool evening hours. That explains the big jump we made in the afternoon. We estimate the actual lead to be three-tenths. According to Amos, Adrian Newey's latest creation once again holds an edge over its rivals on the straight, 
with reports suggesting an advantage of a solid 4 km h. Marco, as per motorsport.com, seems pleased with the performance seen thus far. Very, very, very impressive, said the Austrian. We ran 142 laps, without any problems more or less, and the concept is working. So that was the first main thing. The car is reacting, and we are developing. Yeah, it looks good. Commenting on the team's new concept, which takes cues from parts Mercedes utilised last season but has since abandoned, the Red Bull advisor was even more delighted to note the RB20's reliability. I mean, it's always a risk, he said. And if you look at Mercedes, they had some problems, and our car was working from the very first lap. So we are very proud and glad. Also, the reliability is unbelievable. And from what I saw tyre performance-wise, again, Ferrari has more problems than us. Also, the McLaren seems to be a little bit more nervous. Mercedes, I don't know what they did. For sure they are faster than what they have shown. But we can be confident. The biggest buzz surrounds the new side pod inlets, now dubbed shark mouth inlets. Last year, Red Bull kicked off a trend with underbite inlets, featuring a more pronounced lower lip that extended further toward the car's front compared to the upper lip. Over the last season this design evolved, narrowing the inlet and extending it sideways. What's evident now is a complete reversal, an overbite look. In particular, the upper lip of the inlet is significantly more prominent and appears to have rounded edges compared to the previous year. Calling this design an inlet is challenging, as it's barely visible due to its position and angle. What Red Bull aims to accomplish with this move is a topic of intrigue. In Formula One, numerous factors come into play, as always. Firstly, it's important to acknowledge that without the requisite tools, confidently discussing the aerodynamics and roles of aero components on a car is challenging. Nonetheless, we can make informed estimates about what might be happening. Switching from an underbite inlet to an overbite design offers the advantage of achieving cleaner airflow over the side pods. Since the implementation of the new regulations, the Austrian team has prioritised downwash side pods, where airflow over them plays a critical role. Each side pod inlet creates a high pressure zone in front of it, and as air naturally moves toward areas of lower pressure, this can potentially disrupt airflow in various ways. The primary function of last year's extended lower lip inlets was to relocate the high pressure zone beneath them, facilitating the smooth entry of air into the inlet. However, a drawback of this design is that the sharp edges of the inlet can induce turbulent flows, which are undesirable around our critical aero components. Hence, it appears that Red Bull aimed to prioritise obtaining a clean, high-energy flow over the side pods. This airflow would then be directed into the area above the beam wing effectively assisting the car's floor in generating maximum downforce. On the other hand, as we speculated during the presentation of RB20, there's another inlet that's vertical and entirely distinct from the one mentioned earlier. One possible explanation is that the horizontal inlet alone wasn't adequate for engine cooling, prompting the addition of another inlet. The position of this inlet is highly unusual. In fluid dynamics we have a phenomenon known as the boundary layer, where the flow velocity near a surface is much lower compared to the flow further away from it. This suggests that Red Bull is quite confident in the effectiveness of this concept, despite the less than optimal position of the inlet. But, the true innovation of the shark mouth inlets lies in the substantial undercut space beneath them. Red Bull engineers have cleverly exploited this area to manipulate aerodynamics significantly. They have designed the undercut region to narrow both towards the rear of the car and away from the car, incorporating lateral curvature into the inner wall. This design strategy results in an even larger high-pressure area beneath the side pods compared to what would occur otherwise. Air naturally flows away from areas of high pressure, seeking alternative paths such as underneath the car or along the upper outer surface of the side pod. Moreover, this high-pressure region will significantly assist in pushing the turbulent air generated by the front tyres farther away from the car. Another intriguing detail is the placement of these inlets on the car's shoulders. As discussed in the preceding technical analysis, Red Bull appears to have drawn inspiration from a previous Mercedes model and incorporated this design to mitigate losses occurring behind the car's cockpit. The primary function of these inlets remains uncertain. One hypothesis is that they gather the turbulent air mentioned earlier, while another possibility is that their main purpose is engine cooling. On the first day of testing, Red Bull emerged as the fastest team on the track, 
but teams are still experimenting with new components and strategies, and they are not inclined to reveal their true pace just yet. It will be fascinating to monitor the remainder of testing and, naturally, the start of the season, when we will witness the genuine outcomes of these unconventional and innovative designs crafted by the Red Bull engineers. For now, the most striking impression is the level of confidence exhibited by Red Bull as a team. While many teams stick to refining ideas from the previous year, Red Bull has taken a bold and entirely different approach, demonstrating to everyone the exceptionally high level at which they operate. So, will Max Verstappen have the first undefeated season in Formula One history? Tell us what you think in the comment section down below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching.